of mathematics. <laughs> mathematics, then, is a way of go going from one set of statements to another. It's evidently useful in physics because we have all these different uh, ways that we can speak of things and it permits us to develop consequences and analyze the situations and re-change the laws in different ways and to connect all the various statements so that as a matter of fact the total amount that a physicist knows is very little he has only to remember the rules for getting from one place to another and he's able to do that do it then in other words all of the various statements about equal times the forces in a direction of the radius and so on are all interconnected by reasoning now an interesting question comes up is there some pattern to it is there a place to begin fundamental principles and deduce the whole works or is there some particular pattern or order in nature in which we can understand that these are more fundamental statements and these are more consequential statements? There are two kinds of ways of looking at mathematics which for the purpose of this lecture I will call the Babylonian tradition and the Greek tradition. In Babylonian schools in mathematics, the student would learn something by doing a large number of examples until he caught on to the general rule. Also, a large amount of geog uh, geometry, for example, was known. A lot of properties of circles, theorem of Pythagoras, for example, uh, formulas for the areas of cubes and triangles and everything else. And some a degree of argument was available to go from one thing to another. Tables of uh, numerical quantities were available so that you could solve elaborate equations and so on. Uh, everything was prepared for calculating things out. But Euclid discovered that there was a way in which all of the theorems of geometry could be ordered from a set of axioms that were particularly simple. And you're all familiar with that much geometry, I'm sure. But the Babylonian attitude was, if I make my, my way of talking, what I call Babylonian mathematics, is that you know all these various theorems and many of the connections in between, but you've never really realized that it could all come up from a bunch of axioms. Modern mathematics, the most modern mathematics, concentrates on axioms and demonstrations within a very definite framework of conventions of what's acceptable and not acceptable as axioms. For example, in geometry, it takes something like Euclid's axioms modified to be made more perfect and then to show the deduction of the system. For instance, it would not be expected that a theorem like Pythagoras is that the sum of the squares of the areas of squares put on the sides of the triangle will equal the area of a square on a hypotenuse should be an axiom. On the other hand, from another point of view of, of geometry, that of Descartes, the Pythagorean theorem is an axiom. So the first thing we have to worry about is that even in mathematics, you can start in different places. Because of all these various theorems are interconnected by reasoning, there isn't any real way to say, well, these on the bottom here are the bottom, and these are connected through logic. Because if you were told this one instead, or this one, you could also run the logic the other way if you weren't told that one, and work out that one. It's like a bridge with lots of me members, and it's over-connected. If pieces have dropped out, you can reconnect it another way. The mathematical tradition of today is to start with some particular ones which are chosen by some kind of convention to be axioms, and then to build up the structure from there. The Babylonian thing that I'm talking about, which I don't really not Babylonian, but is to say, well, I know, happen to know this, and I happen to know that, and maybe I know that, and I work everything out from there. And next tomorrow, I forgot that this was true, but I remembered that this was true, and then I reconstruct it again, and so on. I'm never quite sure of where I'm supposed to begin and where I'm supposed to end. I just remember enough all the time so that as the memory fades and the pieces fall out, I re-put the thing back together again every day. The method of starting from the axioms is not efficient in obtaining the theorems. In working something out in geometry, you're not very efficient if each time you have to start back at the axioms. But if you have to remember a few things in the geometry, you can always get somewhere else. It's much more efficient to do it the other way. And the, the, what the best axioms are are not exactly the same, in fact, are not ever the same, as the most efficient way of getting around in the territory. In physics, we need the Babylonian method and not the, Euc the uh, Euclidean or Greek method, and I would like to say why? The problem in the Euclidean method is to make something about the axioms a little bit more interesting or important. But there, the question that we have is, in the case of gravitation, is it more important, is it more basic, is it more fundamental, is it a better axiom to say that the force is directed toward the sun 
or to say that equal areas are swept in equal time. Well, from one point of view, the forces is better because if I state what the forces are, I can deal with a system with many particles in which the orbits are no longer ellipses because of the pull of one on the other and the theorem about equal areas fails. Therefore, I think that the force law ought to be an axiom instead of the other. On the other hand, the principle that equal times are swept out in equal, equal areas are swept out in equal times can be generalized when there's a system of a large number of particles to another theorem, which uh, I had prepared to explain, but I see I'm running out of time. But there's another statement which is a little more general than equal areas in equal time. Well, I have to state what it is. It's rather complicated to say, and it's not quite as pretty as this one, but it's, it's obviously the, the son of this one. I mean, it's the, it's the offspring. If you look at all these particles, Jupiter, Saturn, the sun, and all these things going around, lots of stars or whatever they are, all interacting with each other, and look at it from far away and project it on a plane, like this picture, then everything, everything is moving, this is moving this way, and I'm moving that way, and so on. Then take any point at all, say this point, and then calculate how much each one is changing its area, how much area is being swept out by the radius to every particle, and add them all together. But wait, those masses which are heavier count more strongly. If this is twice as heavy as this one, then this area it counts twice as much. that's doing the sweeping, and the total of all of that is not changing in time. That's the generalization, obviously, of the other one. Incidentally, the total of that is called the angular momentum, and this is called the law of conservation of angular momentum. Conservation just means that it doesn't change. Now, one of the consequences of this is, uh, just to show what it's good for, imagine a lot of stars falling together to form a nebula, a galaxy. As they come closer in, if they were very far out and moving slowly, so there was a little bit of area being generated, but on very long arms, uh, distances from the center, then if the thing falls in, the distances to the center are shorter now, if all the stars are now close in, then these radii are smaller. And in order to sweep out the same area, they have to go a lot faster. So as the things come in, they swing, swirl around, and thus we can roughly understand the qualitative shape of the spiral nebulae. You can also understand in the same way, exactly the same way, the way a skater spins when you start with a leg out, uh, moving slowly, and as you pull the leg in, it spins faster because when the leg is out, it's contributing, when it's moving slowly, a certain amount of area per second, and then when it comes in to get the same area, you have to go around faster. But I didn't prove it for the skater. The skater uses muscle force Gravity is, gra is a different force, yet it's true for the skater. Now we have a problem. We can deduce often from one part of physics, like the law of gravitation, a principle, which turns out to be much more valid than the derivation. This doesn't happen in mathematics, that the theorems come out in places where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> in other words, if we were to say that the postulates of physics were the law of gravitation, we could deduce the conservation of angular momentum, but only for gravitation. But we discover experimentally that the conservation of angular momentum is a much wider thing. Now, Newton had other pipe postulates by which he could get the more general conservation law of angular momentum, but Newtonian laws were wrong. There's no forces, it's all a lot of baloney, the particles don't have orbits, and so on. Yet. The analog, the exact transformation of this pr principle about the areas, the conservation of angular momentum is true with atomic motions in uh, quantum mechanics and is still, as far as we can tell today, exact. So we have these wide principles which sweep across all the different laws. And if one takes too seriously his derivations and feels that this is only valid because this is valid, you cannot understand the interconnections of the different branches of physics. Someday, when physics is complete, then maybe uh, with this kind of argument, we know all the laws, then we could start with some axioms, and no doubt somebody will figure out a particular way of doing it. And then all the, dedu all the deductions will be made. But while we don't know all the laws, we can use some to make guesses at theorems which extend beyond 
the proof. So in order to understand the physics, one must always have a neat balance and contain in his head all of the various propositions and their interrelationships because the laws often extend beyond the range of their deductions. This will only have no importance when all the laws are known. <laughs>